Good afternoon. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm okay. I thought I'd check back in with you all. It's been a while since I've been teaching and we're Zooming all the time. So um, anyway, but looks like it's just you right now. So far so good, just me. And I've been, uh, I got to talk with the folks at ATV. Uh, every week something little changes and this week I can't share my screen. Oh, so, huh. normally, I, normally I have a little, you know, just a, a wait screen says we'll start a little after one, <clears throat> but I can't share my screen. So hmm. apparently I'm not the host. Who knew? Oh, so interesting to find out these things are not limited to academia. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. When we're as zooming as much as we are these days, every little quirk can, uh, can change every day. See, so y'all are doing a lot with Zoom. I mean, I, easily five to 10 times every day. Yeah. And some of them are, you know, an hour, maybe longer. Wow. These are all yeah. meetings for, I don't know, whatever you all meet about, I suppose. Yeah. I, I can't wait to be back face to face when we can solve something in a few words. So what do you do at ATV? I mean, I, I know you do this, but um, I just... Um, so I don't actually work at ATV. They, they've arranged the Zoom for pitch practice, um, just like they would arrange, they would provide the room for it if we were live. Uh, I actually work at a small software company up in, uh, it's technically Atlanta, I call it Smyrna, oh. <clears throat> called FinSync. We make the uh, financial software. Oh, okay, I get it. Well, cool. Sure. Well, we are nearly the end. We are in the eighth week. Eighth week? No, seventh week for um, SCAD. And so. I lost count a long time ago. <clears throat> it feels like years. It really oh, does. Yeah. yeah, we started um, just at the same time that um, the shelter in place. You know, we made the decision, like so many colleges, to go to all online. But I was already teaching all online. So it hasn't really changed my life a whole lot. Yeah. But uh, except that I do have some students who did not. You know, thought they were going to be in a virtual class or they might be in a face-to-face -face class. And then, you know, now they progressed. And so now look, you got all kinds of company. <laughs> yeah. so I just thought it'd be fun to check in because I'm always telling the students how much I've learned from, uh, you know, a few occasions with this and some other things I've done and telling them we're, we're right now dealing with persuasion and I'm helping them understand how much they have to define the problem. And they need to say, be bold and say, what is that you want to be, be forthright, you know, not aggressive. It's because they want to go, oh, I just want to raise awareness. No, no, no. <laughs> We're not going to raise awareness. I want you to ask for something. Yeah. I'm getting ask into something that, that you need. And that's uh, most people struggle with that. Yes. So who's here with you all today? Let me get my... I see Ashley, Caesar, Rebecca, Brandon, and Neil. And forgive my craziness button because I'm on my phone because my Wi-Fi is absolutely horrible. So mm. sorry about that. When I moved in here, because I teach online, I was like, and I heard about Google Fiber, I was like, absolutely, let's give that a shot, you know, and it's been pretty reliable. Think research. straight here and we'll get started. <clears throat> I'm gonna mute here. Yeah, yeah. we were using um, Google Hangouts for a while. I still use that for my daily stand-up with my marketing team, um, and that's worked okay, but I think Zoom has become more dependable, um, the Google Hangouts, doesn't always work for us in other circumstances. So, all right. So we got uh, a usual, I think I've, everybody here has been here before. Um, I hate to do this, but raise your hand or say something if you haven't been here before. That's what I thought. I recognize everybody. So uh, I'm not going to go through the usual spiel other than to, to say that um, the one uh, interesting uh, update, I just got an email this, this morning from Venture Atlanta, and I'm not sure if anybody here is, is familiar with it or been, 
uh, or are planning on going this year, but Venture Atlanta just announced that they are 100% going virtual. Um, and I believe that's in October. Um, so it's normally a, the, one of the biggest venture conferences, uh, the purpose of which is to connect startups with investors. Uh, it's only one of the biggest ones in the Southeast, um, definitely in Atlanta. And um, I'm pretty sure, like I said, it was in, it's in October, but it's now uh, all virtual. So uh, for anybody who is going to present at that or is thinking about presenting, got to know how to pitch virtually. You got to know how to pitch in uh, via video. So uh, what better place to practice than this? So I see a few people who promised that they were going to pitch last week when literally one person pitched last week and it was over really quickly uh it was good but it was it was very short so uh we're just going to take volunteers here can i go first you can because you're <laughs> one of the ones who promised Woo, i've been waiting yeah, I'm, I'm glad i did that I, I always do better if i put myself on the hook and then i'm accountable for doing something i so. am exactly the same if i don't have a deadline it doesn't get done I'm there, if i do but, 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 knock it out <laughs> all, right, all right so, so uh, I've, I've got my handy dandy stopwatch okay uh, whenever you're ready give us a give us a roll okay all right um on on three one two three what do you think of when you hear the term augmented reality ar do you think of pokemon go seeing your favorite characters appear on the table or on the sidewalk around you do you think of uh snapchat uh face filters where um the computer can track people's features and put on CGI effects that Hollywood would have paid millions of years ago, a few years, a few years ago. But do you think of personal things? Have you ever gotten a happy birthday message, a literal happy birthday message from a friend written in their fingerprints? Or has anybody ever said, look at the vase I made from a 3D studio and Oculus Rift? I'm Neil Brennan, and my app Garfiti is going to let people get personal with AR. You'll easily be able to create and share augmented reality content. Um, creating virtual reality is as easy as snapping a picture. Sending a 3D model for a friend so they can view it on their table is as easy as sending an animated GIF. Um, as this rocket ship starts to take off, the big name sponsors are going to be fighting each other for a spot on the, the landing page of this app. My ask for now is uh just users to test it see what works see what doesn't when this thing when we really go live with this thing i want it to be hot so if you can help out and be a test user for this you can be part of something big excellent thank you neil you promised and you've delivered <laughs> yeah i'm glad i did right. that. so my first question is how long do you think you talk Ugh, probably 50 seconds gosh Sorry, uh, a minute 15. Ooh, I, I know that it went over and I'd rather be guilty of at least I have what I want. I have my brain around it and I can yep. whittle that down, but it's a way worse problem to not know what I want. Now I know what the, the pitch is and I think I can whittle it down. Um, so I think I'll, I'll, I'll be, I can promise next Friday already, I can promise to have that this uh, boiled down some. Good. Good. Well, let's see what message got across to the audience. Who can tell me, um, first of all, the name of Neil's company? There it is. <laughs> can anybody say it for me? Sure. AR. <laughs> Garfiti. That's one you have to wear a shirt because it's graffiti, but you switch the A and the R because it's AR. Yeah. Good. Um, all right, so who can tell me the problem that Garfiti is aiming to solve? Personal uh, use of AR, just uh, and spiced, I, yeah, I was a little vague on that. Um, making, uh, uh, AR isn't personal, so Garfiti helps uh, a make AR personal um, at, uh, and easy. So is that, is Neil, let's, let's separate, because uh, what Caesar just did there was say, he took the, both the, the problem, what he, what he stated is problem, AR is not personal, and then your, your solution, which is making it personal. So 
is that the pain you're solving and AR is not personal? Uh, I had trouble with that because um, I didn't really, uh, it's almost a game and I don't know if there's pain involved. So trying to like, um, if somebody, if you had a, a neat tasting candy, um, what problem does that solve? And I, I, so for a while I was like, this is a game and there isn't really a problem. But then I thought about it and I said, you know what, AR does exist. And I didn't want to bad mouth Pokemon Go or any of those things, but I wanted to just demonstrate that it's a neat technology, but it's only been one way so far. Companies put things there and you, you can't really create stuff. People know that you can make 3D models and things, but they don't know that they can make it and send it to their friend today. And their friend can say, wow, you made that. And so I'm trying to say that that's kind of a problem is that AR is this thing that we have access to, but we don't have access to it. Okay. Well, I would say maybe so, what would help would be knowing what we can do on your platform. Uh, maybe some innovative ways of how to use AR that are different that would get excited. That might help in terms of um, entertainment because entertainment's a little different and a little trickier to um, pitch. Um, but one thing that I feel like I didn't really get was a sense of... Um, if this is kind of like a game, if it is kind of, uh, or an expressive platform, what, what can I do? I think the only two things that I heard were uh, I can send um, like a message or something. There was like a box or I can't remember anymore, but. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, this is good, this is good. Um, I was making uh, two points that said, um, have you ever gotten a, a, a happy birthday message in augmented reality from your friend, personalized in there with their fingerprints all over it? Um, and then I said, has a friend ever sent you, look at the vase I made today. Um, is somebody speaking? Probably a phone going off. <laughs> Well, you, you did have a long uh, attention getter introduction, and I felt that you know, listening. I was thinking, okay, he's getting there. I, I often have to get students. I teach um, public speaking for a college for for SCAD, actually. So I, I come here to hang out and get more great um, real life examples. So I think what you were reaching for is to to say people. Uh, okay, Mother's Day is coming up. Are you tired just giving candy and roses? You really want something that makes you distinguish, you know, distinguishes you, which sounds very much like a, an infomercial, but that's pretty much what all these infomercials do is identify a problem, and it can sound cheesy, but that seems to me to be the problem is that people want a new and innovative, interesting way to send, a, you know, a caring message. Good. I'm writing these down. I think one of the things I wanted to get to or um, uh, uh, or probe in terms of asking about what other things that we can do like that that define the platform would be just because um, if you think of some other let's go to the VR space and think about VR chat or even though one of the things that you could do is um, you know create avatars, uh, send virtual messages, is that really what it is? Or is it a gathering place for friends on online? Right? Not a gathering. So, for your, so, for your, so for your product, um, yes, you can send uh, personalized messages, but is that really what your platform is about? Or is it about uh, personalizing your world? Or is something completely different and that's not what we're getting? What it's about right now in its current iteration is a, an AR messaging app. So you and your friends can say, boink, I just received something from my friend. Is it gonna appear on your table? It'll, it'll tell you, it'll say, well, they sent you a, a coffee cup or they sent you a dinosaur, they, they sent you a 3D model or else they'll say, um, no, it's virtual graffiti. And it'll say, look at this, look for this picture. And it'll say, look in the, the Starbucks window across the street from your apartment. And then you go, Point your viewer at that and then when it sees the sign it overlays it with the virtual graffiti that they did so it's those two things right now but it's almost the form of a um, messaging app where you can send AR artifacts or it's not almost that's what it is it's an AR messaging app and it, it can expand and it can go places and I can pivot but for its current iteration it's a way for people to send AR create and send AR to each other
So how is it placed in my world? Is it basically like, let's say I get a card, right? Uh, do I receive the message, I open it, and basically it opens a virtual uh, object that I place in my world? Or do they have access to basically my room and can put it there? Like It'll have a little target. Um, and if you've ever used like a Google uh, viewer for Google's had things where you can put a tiger in your room or another thing. When you open it up, it's a viewer and it almost looks like a camera viewer. And you're just looking at the world around you and it'll have like crosshairs that say, put the crosshairs where you want your animal to, where you want this object to, um, to be put. And the crosshairs will be grayed out until it finds the, until the camera determines that it's a flat surface. So you can do it on the table in front of you, or you can do it in the floor, or you can do it outside on the, on the ground. Um, but it, it'll have a, a preview picture of what, the, what you've been sent. And it'll say, this is the, um, a rocking chair or a dinosaur. And then you'll say, I want to see that. And so you tap on it. And then the viewer will say, find a spot for this to go. And you'll see those crosshairs. Um, I think that that interface is, almost standard right now for people looking at objects um so you're you're but you'll be looking at a, a instant messenger uh flow and then you'll see you can type in text messages and say hey you can use it as a normal chat and then then you get a special thing um that that comes through and says tap this to to view this and it'll give you a thumbnail of whatever the image is or whatever the 3d model is and if it's a uh, virtual graffiti it'll say go look at this it'll tell you what the target is that you need to point your phone at because they're friends they'll know what that means if you send your friends something that's really left field um, then you're you've got an instant messenger thing and you can say what the heck is that and then they can go from there so Neil what I was thinking when you were going through that um, your description your early on description was that um, what you're trying to do is give us the give the anybody anybody with a phone the ability to create the experience that the people who played pokemon go had meaning pokemon created all these things they put them everywhere and I, I'm, I'm not I'm using the wrong vocabulary because i never played it but uh you, you got a you, you discovered a, a thing and you would go and you'd be looking for it so now you're and but that was only available to us on the receiving side and so now you're saying that you can give me the ability to send my son or daughter a, an AR thing, just like they would have seen if they played Pokemon Go. Yes. Okay. So this, that's great. I'm glad I got to that. Because here's, here's where I'm going with that is um, that's the problem. Is that everybody, do you know how many people play Pokemon Go? Uh, millions. 200 million. Nice. That's significant. Uh -huh. And that was, that was just in like the first year that it was, you know, it came out in 2016 and eight months later or something, it, it 200 million people can cross or something like that. Anyway, so 200 million people got on the receiving end of that. The, there's only one or, you know, the, only the big massive software makers, the game makers are on the delivery end of that. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but you're trying to give them, uh, Instagram easy ability to create AR experiences. Yes, and I'm writing that term down. Instagram easy. Hope you don't mind if I borrow that. Um, yes, I'm, trying, I'm putting this, I'm making this to where it's uh, as easy to use as snapping pictures and um, sending texts. Good. Um, so, so when you, when you were, uh, you went part of where you were, Kevin, you dropped out on us, or at least me. Yeah, he's dropped out on me too. <laughs> so um, I, I, I like your concept. Um, I think um, if we think empathetically about the people that might be using this, um, it seems like um, to be able to uh, place an object, like unless you're basically just getting, oh, I have a mailbox and you've received a message, you're kind of leaving it on whoever the recipient to put the image into, uh, into the, to place it on somewhere in, in your AR space. Um, because otherwise what would have to happen is the, the person that would make the message would have to create the object 
and then actually be physically present in wherever room that they're going to leave it. So no, when you if you send somebody a little army tank, they don't have to to view it in the room that you created it. Right, but that's what I'm saying is like that that puts the 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 I don't want to call it burden, but it, it gives an extra task of the recipient to open this object. And because the person who sent it is not in physically present, then that leaves it to the recipient to have to put it into the virtual space. So it's not as much of a discovery, right? It's like you get an email, but now the, instead of an email, it's a virtual object that you place, right? Um, okay. But the, if you think about the technology a little bit more abstractly, um, unfortunately, this is a, a little difficult maybe with, with the coronavirus or whatever, but um, it, if you lean into this graffiti aspect, then what you can do is say, um, well, now what I'm doing is I'm personalizing uh, the world itself, right? Like I'm leaving messages, not for necessarily someone that I know, um, but me, but people that I don't know, right? So, um, uh, I won't have the likenesses option. are like, uh, to this kind of model are uh, scavenger hunts or um, what is it called? Uh, geocaching, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, where you can leave virtual things. You can gamify that. Um, additionally too, you can still go with the personal stuff. Like for example, um, uh, uh, cemeteries, hospitals, uh, places where you uh, maybe want to leave like graffiti, actual graffiti, right? Like some sort of personal expression on, on, an, on a real world place, but that doesn't have, you know, the, the setbacks of actually leaving graffiti, you know? True. Like you can paint your space. You can leave True. messages for other people. To True. That's, that's already in there. Um, we've got scavenger hunts as a feature. We've got tours. If you want to, um, if you go to Cabbage Town, we've got something set up where you can point at graffiti on the murals um, and it'll tell you who painted it and it'll give you a link to their, their personal spots. So there are a few applications. What I, those are going to be for premium users. That's not going to be for your average Joe. Um, one of the feedback things I got when I got to ATV and I'm in a program at Georgia Tech and, um, and they said, guy, they said, you've put too much, too many features in here. I know I probably wasted a year trying to put every possible feature into this thing. So I hit them, I had took out most of the features and hid them. And those are going to be for businesses and premier users and things. So for the most part, this is going to be for people to chat with each other. And I don't want to do anonymous postings on walls and things, because I think that that could catch fire way too fast and some wacko could put hate speech or something on, a, on, on something the first week it's out and you get a stain like that on your reputation and you're in trouble. Um, trying to look into um, geofencing solutions, cemeteries and things, uh, that sounds like a great idea, but... Um, I mean, that may be re engineering too far, right? Because yeah. uh, for you to be able to have those types of contra controversy problems, you would actually have to have some sort of like, uh, like, market penetration, right? Like it, it's controversial and like, so those are growing problems, right? Those aren't like. True, but um, you know, I, I'm in a weird predicament where I already built this. I'm one of those ding dongs that they say, you know, if you build it, he will, they will come. I'm one of the dumbs, dumb dumbs that built it first and I didn't do the research, but it, it enables me to think of some things. If I pull the trigger, this thing could take off fast and I don't want some kids to be bullying each other and things like that. There's a, there are some semi-competitors doing similar things and they said that some people put ugly messages up almost immediately. Well, the reason I probe you is like, because um, if we, again, think about emp empathetically about the people that are, are, are using, potentially using this app, um, like, do you think that the novelty of sending someone a virtual object that they can place in the real world like some sort of model they made um, to hold a singular message, or maybe it's just an object. Um, like, is that enough to sustain one-on-one -on -one communication or, you know, like uh, over, over a long time, right? Like, or will the novelty wear off and now we're just back to texting because it's just more convenient, right? Like it's so, so much more convenient. And if, if, if it, if, um, 
I do want to send a really personalized in, uh, uh, message. Well, how many times will I do that a year, right? Will I send that Mother's Day? You know, how many interactions can I possibly have per user for, for this? If my focus is really personalized messages, True. right? Versus, versus uh, um, which is what I was saying of like uh, graffiti your world, right? Like, uh, like you can do it anywhere, everywhere, you have potentially many more recipients for your message versus, you know, you're much more closed in circle, personal circle. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Um, I think that, that uh, I'm, ex you're describing, uh, let's say that there's two extremes and I think the, the best place is somewhere in the middle. One extreme would be anybody can post for the whole world to see. Go to the Coca-Cola Center and point this thing at the sign and you'll see what I wrote. I see a little bit of danger in anybody being able to do that but then too many rules and only nobody can ever do stuff and only friends can send to registered friends. That takes some of the fun and the zip out of it. Maybe in the middle, you can find if you build some uh, karma and you get some points and you establish yourself, or if you're a premium user, you can do these things. And then we can take your premium users away. And that's a penalty. Um, if there's consequences to doing these things, then maybe somewhere in the middle, maybe putting in a, a thing where you can report something. I don't like this looks hurtful, something in the middle. And I think that you make a good point in that it might just be a novelty that somebody says that was fun for an afternoon and why would we do that tomorrow? So I live in that danger, but what I do feel good about is I've got, I can pivot easy. I'm the one that engineered it and I built it to, to be durable. And so if somebody says, well, you could use it in this way or that way, it's not gonna, it'll be easy to pivot and find, you know, it's been an iterative process so far. So getting this in people's hands, somebody might give me feedback and say, well, why don't you do this? And then in two months from now, I won't be saying that it's an AR messaging app. I'll be saying it's a family reunion, something, something, who knows what, or help people with golf. Um, so, uh, so I want to get it in people's hands and I want to see what they like about it, and what they don't like. And then sometimes it's the demograph. Sometimes people in their twenties play with this for an hour and then throw it away. But people that are 15 to 18 will love it. And, and, uh, want to mark up their, their neighborhoods or maybe just college kids or something. Um, yeah. I don't need to, well, sorry. Sorry. I wanted to, to interrupt and, and get back to your pitch because okay. I think you just touched on something that's very important about your pitch, which is your, your goal right now is to get it into people's hands. So forget all the stuff that it could do, might do, you can see it doing, or you could build. And if your goal is to get it in people's hands and learn, then build your pitch around that. So okay. in, in that case, start backwards. So we, we've kind of jumped all over here. We haven't gone our usual formula, and that's okay. You're asked what you want people to do is download the app and, and use it, correct? Yes. Okay. So make that really easy. So it would be... Download the app by going to graffiti.com and downloading it. That's your ask. Boom. So back up from there, an easy part. So think about, you know, the, the same people who play Pokemon Go, probably your target audience here. They like AR. Mm -hmm. Right? True. So open up with so, sorry, Kevin, I'm, I, you're cracking up pretty hard. I'm Your signal's breaking up. Yeah, it's bad. That's not good. Like 200 million people play Pokemon Go because they... Okay. Yeah, my connection here is... Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, that will go temporarily, so I'll talk fast. Is that your neighbor's Wi-Fi now? <laughs> <laughs> no, you would think my, I spent 13 years in the Wi-Fi industry. You think I have decent Wi-Fi, it's terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I did get, when he comes back, I did get to start backwards. Then my main point is to download and test and try to figure out um, what makes this hot and what, 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 who are the people that, that, that are connecting with it? Um, 
what looks like the, the trajectory. Um, I'm kind of, kind of going to be kind of looking for the window. Um, if you talked to me six months ago, this thing would have looked a lot different. So I'm, I'm definitely open to um, pivoting, changing, up, uh, changing what's what. I know if, if you've ever done a writing course, they say you have to kill your babies when you, when you do writing. Um, I've already had to kill a few babies. It was pretty sad, but, um, but I'm willing to do that and just kind of see, see what makes this thing work, you know. It's murder your darlings, no babies. Murder, <laughs> murder your darlings. <laughs> I'll say um, it was a very good journey that you took us on. Like I'm pumped that you finally did your pitch, and it went pretty well. Besides how long it was, of course, but good. yeah, I like the journey that you took us on. It kind of like wrote me in, and I could understand like what was going on. Um, and I definitely like the information that Kevin gave about working backwards because I feel like I have the whole beginning and middle part of my um, pitch worked out perfectly, and it flows well, but. I need to work with the ending mostly. So I think that'll help me as well too. So that was some really good feedback. Okay. Okay, great. So Neil, I may be back now. So I'm going to talk really fast. 200 million people play Pokemon Go. They were all on the receiving end. I'm putting you on the giving end of AR. Download my app. Great. I like that. Make sure if you're going to ask somebody to download it, tell them exactly what to do. Go to garfini.com and download the app or whatever it is that they need to do. You know, I want to ask, um, and, and Ken mentioned about, you know, being this virtual. And so in you know, like today is just practice and everything. I, I really wanted to see some visuals with what you were doing. Um, given this medium that we're all in now, I, I, I imagine you're working on that as well, thinking about what, what, how can you create a recording, you know, a little message. If uh, I've got a ton of stuff, my website actually shows people using this, um, getgarfiti.com. Um, if it's, <laughs> uh, if you go to getgarfiti.com, you can, you can do that. I don't know if that's taboo or how I would play a video doing this. Um, but I've got, I've got so much media of people using it that, uh, my Mac tells me I'm running out of storage every couple minutes. Um, so if there is a way to work in media for uh, um, Zoom, I can look into that and maybe next Friday I'll tell you whether it's doable or not. I was just thinking about how, how you prepare in the future that you have any sort of recordings that, you know, like a minute recording. And uh, I was just thinking, well, this is such a fun topic to think about what your whole set is. You're like, I don't know where you, are you looking at the screen right now of like where we all are? No, I've got a bigger monitor and then here's, I can look at my laptop and it probably looks like I'm looking at you. Right. Um, so what I teach my students is you got to look right at that camera lens. Okay. And it's really hard to get used to. It's taken me a long time and I, well, this quarter doing a lot more recordings than I had before. And I've always advised people, but I haven't had to do it myself. So put something above that, around that camera lens that will keep your eye to keep gravitating back to it. And that way you really do convey more about eye contact and connection. And it kind of takes you out of looking at yourself or looking at whatever's on a screen. And it, it just, it, to me, it makes me more sensitive to the idea that I'm really talking to a person on the other side of that camera lens or on the other side of all these wires. But that's, I just think you have a great you know, idea. I love it. I was thinking, how can I use that in teaching? But to think about where we're going and how much the COVID-19 is going to isolate us into this, into this medium, then it's a natural fit what you have. And it will add more to your credibility and how you are using this medium and make it more interesting, you know, add to your message. Great. Yes. I, I'm definitely taking, taking notes on that. I will be next Friday. If I'm not looking into the camera the whole time. You guys can, <laughs> Green, <I mean. laughs> well you're mailing it right now you're looking right in that's perfect <laughs> yeah it's better right. much better yeah thanks for the feedback guys very good very good thank you neil well done who would like to pitch next <laughs> oh, are we gonna do this two weeks in a row <laughs> and Maybe. Like I said, I got to work on my ending. I want to work backwards and then come back on Friday and have something good. Okay. I got my beginning and middle. I just need my end. So, I'll go good. before I, I change anything else in this. I've been trying to play around with it. Hold on. Okay.
Okay, so I don't know it, so I'm just gonna kind of read through it. That's fine. Reading is the best way to practice it. When you read through that first time, it's the best way. Okay, cool. So go uh, ahead. Hi, I'm Ashley, co-founder of My Totem. Through my experience in the design industry, I discovered many new companies struggle with branding and creating their visual identity. Online design tools and logo generators are convenient, but they still leave users with an overwhelming amount of design decisions. My Totem uses data-driven design algorithms to personalize the branding process and allow tech-savvy entrepreneurs the ability to make and apply brand assets seamlessly. We're raising 300K for a 15-month runway to build the next phase of My Totem. That's it. <laughs> how, long, how long do you think you spoke? Uh, 32? Maybe like 31 and a half. Okay. Maybe right on. Yeah, that was very good. That was very good. Okay, um, so who can tell me the name of her company? My Totem? Yes. And that's My Totem, like My Totem Paul, same exact thing, My Totem? Oh, no, yeah, My Totem. Okay. It's supposed to be like your, your visual symbol, um, your brand identity. Okay. All right, good. Uh, what is the problem that my totem wants to solve? New companies struggle with visual identity. Um, she's going to help use data-driven um, insights to provide them with um, their visual identity. All right. So you covered the problem and the solution. Is that problem actually? Is that problem accurate? Yes. Small business good. owners struggle with design decisions. So is it small businesses or is it new companies? It's, it's new companies. Okay. Yeah, we're focusing on new companies. Um, companies at every level struggle with design decisions. Um, mainly small to medium, but uh, especially new entrepreneurs. Okay. And uh, I think, Neil, I think you covered how she solved that as well. Can you repeat that? Using data-driven insights to, to come up with the visual for logos and visual identity. Yeah. All right. So um, I think this is good, Ashley, because the first question I want to know is for a new company, how are you going to give me data-driven insights? Because if it's new, I don't have any data. Right. So that's good that I want to know how you're going to do it. So uh, how are you? Specify because the the data driven algorithms are data that we've combined from uh, professional design and um, what works in your industry and your target audience. Okay, good. Um, and we already established that her, her oh, you're breaking her up. Her customer is new businesses. However, uh, what kind? Do you have a more specific new business um right now we're looking into um restaurant owners actually caesar uh suggested that to me um about like a month back and that's actually uh who uses um automated logo generators the most actually uh <laughs> but i don't know how to I don't, I don't know. I was thinking of ways to kind of put it, put it in, um, without just, cause, cause I don't want to make it seem like, you know, everyone else doesn't have design problems, but I also want to specify enough. Yeah. So I, it, I don't think you can, you don't need to worry about, um, saying or, or excluding or including certain people that have design problems, but you're saying, you know, this many people have design problems. We're going after these people right here. So that's okay. Um, you don't have to worry about X new businesses that look like this. The more specific, the better. Um, unless you already have an established customer acquisition process. Um, do you have any customers now? Yes, we have uh, 13 paying and about 111 free. Okay. Good. So what, what's the, what's the common, a couple of common things that those customers and users have? What is, what's their look like? 
Um, these company, the majority of them came to get their initial branding and um, make content for their Instagrams and social. Okay. Wow. All right, good. Um, so I would recommend that in your pitch, you get really, really specific with that type because if I'm that type of audience, I can self identify or if I know somebody who's that type of audience, I can say, hey, you guys need to look over here. Whereas when you just say a new company, that's really, really huge. Right. So again, think Amazon. Now they're really huge, but for the first four years, they sold one product to one audience. And so you got to nail down that audience and there's lots of them and you can find enough of the, that audience to make a business. And as you refine your process, then you can slowly move out from there. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Uh, what did she ask for? Money. 300 grand. Yeah. And you said a 15 month runway? Yes. Did you tell us what you're going to use that for? Uh, no, I didn't. Well, yeah, to build the next phase. Um, what, does that, what does that mean? So to build the next iteration um, so that it, it's really getting us 30,000 um, new users. Uh, but to do that, it's going to take some dev too. Um, right but I didn't know how to put in 30K users. It was kind of weird. I was playing with it. Well, um, I think you can, you know, cause uh, the, what, a, what an investor would be looking for is, okay, you're at point A right now and you want to get to point B and your theory, your hypothesis is $300,000 will get me from roughly 150 customers. I know it's not quite that many, but from, uh, roughly 150 customers to 30,000 users. That's a massive jump. But if you can, back it up and, and say it very specifically, you know, we're going to go from 150 users to 30,000 with that 300 K we're going to do it in 15 months. That's incredibly aggressive, but the, the next question is going to come out of that. They're either going to say, I don't believe you or, okay, how are you going to do that? And then you can walk, you, you want the ones that say, how are you going to do that? Um, right. And then the answer to that is, well, here's how we got the first 150. We're going to scale and, optimize that process so that we don't get 150 we got 150 a day or a week or whatever that math ends up being does that make sense yeah it does okay all right um who has questions or feedback for ashley on her pitch it was really good yeah um if you want to you can just say small businesses maybe like, or um, come up with something clever to play or along that, like, um, I don't know, uh, big street marketing for uh, main street businesses, I don't know, something like that. Try to use main street. People like to romanticize small businesses um, and lots of people like to identify with that. So um, it seems like something that everybody would get. Oh, restaurants, um, mom and pop shops, that kind of thing. You could possibly open with one of those stories. Sarah spent, her, Sarah yeah. was into cinnamon rolls and she finally put her dream together. And um, then she got stuck. Don't, you don't want to be stuck here or something like that. If you put a name with it and a, um, uh, it can be, make a little bit more of a splash in the opening. Yeah. If it's true, if you know somebody, it'll be even better because then you'll 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 sell it better. If you if you're like, well, my aunt Sarah, you know, Aunt Julie, or somebody you know, and it'll just uh, pop. I agree. Okay. Good. That's good feedback. Anything else? Uh, All right. Actually, I, th I thought you were very very clear. And like I said, you, you got it in like 31 seconds. So your timing's really good. Um, I just think you, the only thing I think you can you focus on is getting really, really specific in the type of customer you're looking for. And then for your ask, um, how you're going to get, because 30,000 is a great number. It's a shocking number to go, you know, for this type of service to get from 150 to, to, uh, to 300,000 to 30,000 users. It's a big number. 
So if you put that out there, that'll get that'll get attention, and then you got to back up how you're going to get there. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'm inter I'm curious just to hear about from an engineering standpoint, you know, how it all works. We don't have time for that now, but sometime that's a, that sounds like a cool project. I like the presentation, by the way. Thanks. It's it's fun to work on too. So I'll show you guys one day, maybe next Friday. Job. Um, am I on? Yeah. Um, my my suggestion is we when we get that time thing going, we start to speed up. And so I want you just to articulate. You can speak fast. Who is the guy who talks really fast? He was brilliant. Uh, he was talking really fast and he had slowed down or I was like so we heard Bobby. weeks ago. Bobby. Yeah. Bobby. Yeah. But what, what he does to compensate for that is really articulate very well. So you're going to feel like you're over articulating, but that is how your audience will be able to process what you're saying. We actually can hear very fast. But unless you want to talk really fast, they just slur all over the words and then we can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> so yeah. slow down with that. Okay. But I can't wait to see. I can't just, just yeah, I want to see more. <laughs> Wonderful. Very good. Any other comments or feedback for Ashley? All right. Well done, Ashley. I appreciate it. That was good. Thanks. All right. Is anybody else going to pitch? Took a long time for Ashley to step up. So, anybody else? Going once. Going twice. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Have a wonderful weekend. And we will be right back here next Friday, same time, uh, same Zoom channel. <laughs> Thanks for putting this together, Kevin. Absolutely. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Thank All you, right. Bye. Bye. Bye.